friends! Today I'm going to be making myself a new dress for an ice skating trip that I have coming up and I'm really excited and I was initially planning on wearing something I already have but everything in my wardrobe is either not warm enough or it's made out of fabric that stains when it gets wet so if you fall over and the ice melts it becomes water it's a problem. So obviously I need a new dress <laughs> and I'm planning on using a really lovely fabric that was gifted to me by a friend. There's at least 16 yards of it, so there's tons to work with. I can do pretty much anything I want. And although the trip is not themed around a specific time period, the first thing I think of when you say old-fashioned ice skating is a Victorian lady with a fur muff and a coat and a long skirts. So I'm going to be making a dress from my personal favorite fashion era, the Victorian bustle gown era and I am super excited because you can never have enough big bustle gowns in your life. <laughs> okay, so here's what we have to work with. Here's my beautiful printed fabric. I'm really excited to work with that. I'm going to be using all truly Victorian patterns for this, so I'm going to try this bodice pattern, which I think looks super cute. And I'm going to use these two patterns for the skirt. I've used this underskirt pattern before. I know this works really well for me, so that should be pretty easy. This one I might make some tweaks to. I'm not sure how I feel about this coming up in a big V right in the front, so I might add another piece or make it overlap or something. We'll figure it out when we get to it. Uh, but hopefully this shouldn't be too complicated of a project until I decide to make it complicated as usual. <laughs> I decided to start with the underskirt first, as I've already used this pattern before and can just jump right in without having to worry about the fit. I'm also adding a super giant pocket to the side back seam so that I have somewhere to store all of my things while I'm skating without having to hold on to a small bag or anything. I sewed the pocket pieces in before finishing the seam and used the same fabric as the skirt so it will blend in if the inside of the pocket happens to peek out. I decided not to line the skirt, and instead pinked all of the skirt seam allowances to keep them from fraying. I also pressed all of my seams open to make everything nice and neat. I finished the side opening just by folding under the seam allowance and top stitching it. I also machine sewed on the waistband and the hem. Since this is a very patterned fabric, I doubt anyone will be able to see my stitching lines. Okay, so I put this on inside out just for a minute to show you how giant this pocket is. I will fit so many things in there. I love it. about how this comes up into a single point in the front and the directions say that if you want it to overlap more just cut the front pieces a size or two larger. So I'm gonna try that and see how I like it. If I don't like it I have gazillions of yards of fabric and I can try something else. Also these pattern pieces are absolutely ginormous. They were not kidding when they said just the overskirt takes five yards. For the first step, I pressed up my hem folds with the iron before sewing them down, which makes it much easier to sew without things wiggling around. This is just the center back piece. 
there's also front pieces. It's huge! Next up, I hemmed the two front pieces and then attached them to the back piece. Okay, so we've got the front section attached to the back sections, and this skirt does not fit on my floor. So we're going to start gathering things up, and hopefully it starts looking like something. <laughs> I started with the front pleats, pinning them in place and then basting them together on the machine. It's always helpful to sew your pleats together before attaching them to anything, so that you won't have to redo them if you need to make any changes. To attach the waistband, I started with pinning the front sections on each end. Because they're already pleated as much as they need to be, once they're in place I'll know exactly how much I need to gather down the back pieces. After stitching on the gathered skirt, I folded the waistband over the seam allowance and started pinning it in place. I made sure to keep the waistband an even width as I went. I decided to just sew this down by machine since no one will ever see it. The next step was to pleat the side seams down to a couple of inches. I just eyeballed them as I went and checked that both sides were about the same length when I was done. I figured it would be rather tedious to do all of that pleat math, and I think it looks perfectly fine with my slightly imperfect pleats. I sewed over my pleats with my machine, as again, I avoid hand sewing on my personal projects at all costs. I went very slowly though to make sure that I wouldn't hit any pins as I went. To gather up the poofs in the back, I added long ribbon tapes to the center back of the waistband. I then put the overskirt on my dress form and played around with pinning the fabric to the tapes in different places until I was happy with how it looked. This was very finicky, but I was pleased with the outcome in the end. After taking the skirt off the form, I went ahead and hand tacked the skirt to the ribbon everywhere I had pinned it. So this is what the skirt looks like from the inside, with all the rigging and tacking and such. This is what's holding up the bustling in the back, so this cross ribbon will help pull all of this back so that it doesn't start sliding towards the front of the dress. And these three vertical ones are helping to hold up the little poofs at the back of the skirt. It looks kind of weird, but hey, it works. Okay, so this is what we have so far. I'm looking pretty good. I'm very froofy. So far, so great. I've used another truly Victorian pattern for a bodice before, and it ended up being very long in the waist. So I preemptively decided to shorten in the waist on all of my pieces and hope that this one needs the same amount of shortening. And I just did this by measuring up the same amount as I did last time and just folding my pattern pieces, and then I'll see how it looks. Okay, so here is the bodice knockup. It looks really pretty good. I'm very happy with the fit generally. I am going to need to recut the front because as you can see, it just barely meets and there should be enough for it to overlap with buttons. <laughs> so we're gonna need to recut this front panel, but it seems like it fits everywhere else pretty well. So I'm just going to redo the front and not the whole thing. I also mocked up this sleeve and it's a little big. So I pinned out some of it and checked 
I can still bend my arm, very important. And I think after I make these quick pattern alterations, I should be ready to go. I marked out all of the changes on my paper pattern before cutting out my new bodice pieces. If you want to know more about how I do this, check out the video linked above on how to transfer your fitting changes to your pattern. I was able to reuse most of my mock-up as my bodice lining, so I just laid out the lining pieces on my fabric and pinned them together rather than retracing all of them individually. I did my best to keep the pattern on the fabric level going around the bodice, which I think I mostly managed to succeed on. This entailed trying to line up the repeat on the pattern across each piece at the waist, so that once sewn together the little flower motifs are mostly in level lines going around instead of being all over the place. I also managed to use up a little bit of black cotton in my stash for the cuffs and collars, which I thought would make a nice contrast with the main fabric pattern. To prepare all the bodice pieces for assembly, I flatlined each piece by machine sewing around the outside edge. I then serged all of the edges of each piece as I won't be fully lining the bodice. So I spent literally half my day yesterday cutting out all of my pieces, flatlining them to the inner lining, serging all of my edges all that good stuff, and I, my event is in five days, and I have yet to get a single piece sewn to another piece. I'm never running this far behind. I procrastinated real hard on this one, so wish me luck. <laughs> I started assembly by sewing in the front darts. I find darts easiest to sew and press before that piece has anything else attached to it to get in the way. Another tip on darts, I never backstitch the pointed end on my machine. Instead, I knot the threads together and then trim them. This keeps you from getting weird puckers right up at the tip of your dart on your bust area, which is never flattering. The last piece of bust dart wisdom I have to impart is to always press the ends of your darts over a curved tailor's ham if you have one. This helps to press the end into a soft curve rather than giving you hard points. Once the front darts were finished, I bagged out and then pressed the front shawl collar pieces, as these need to be finished first before they can go into the side front seam. The next thing was just to start putting all the seams together. I assembled all the front pieces and then all the back pieces separately, and then attached them all at the side seams. This helps me keep things a little more organized and not have to have all of the pieces flopping around under the machine all at once. To help keep the bodice from wrinkling up too much, I added some lightweight plastic boning to some of the seams by sewing bone tape to the seam allowances. I carefully pinned it in place and then sewed it on with a zipper foot, and then finished off the little ends by hand. So, quick up. 
update on how I'm doing because I forgot to film because I'm running behind schedule. I got my facings put on and I decided to face around the edge instead of doing a full lining, but it went in pretty much the same way as a lining. I'm just gonna hand sew it a little bit from the edge instead of lining the whole thing. Got my bones in, I've got my collar ready to sew on, and then I just need to do sleeves. Okay. The sleeves are a pretty basic two-part sleeve with little cuffs at the bottom. I opted not to line them so they don't get too stiff and difficult to bend my arms in. Alright friends, it is the night before I need to be able to wear this dress and she still doesn't have sleeves. I've been making really steady progress on this so far. I got the buttons on, I got the collar attached, and she's still not done. I've literally never procrastinated this hard on a sewing project and I don't know what to do with this. I... <laughs> It'll be done by tomorrow. It'll be fine. It's fine. <laughs> I ended up sewing the cuffs straight onto the bottom of the sleeves and just whip stitching the seam allowance up out of the way. This was partially due to time constraints, but also once the cuff is folded up, those stitches won't be visible at all, so it's fine. I also overbought on buttons, so I decided to add a few to the cuffs for extra detail. Once the sleeves were hemmed, I machine sewed those right on in and was immensely relieved that I would not be going to an outdoor event in February sleeveless. Hooray! I was starting to worry by now that I actually wouldn't finish a project on time for the first time in my life, so whew, I did it. <laughs> now that sleeves were safely secured in place, I was able to get around to final details like buttonholes and fold in the fancy bit at the back of the bodice. Again, I just eyeballed this and didn't measure, and I think it worked out perfectly fine. I really love this little detail in this pattern, I just think it's so neat. After I was happy with my little pleats, I whip stitched them down just to the lining layer on the inside. And just like that, we are all done and ready for skating! enjoyed following along. Please think about sticking around if you'd like to see more projects like this one. See you next time!